Now, finally, all of the setup is out of the way. This is really the main meal of this topic, right? Inverse trigonometric functions, number one, it's the hardest part of inverse functions. Like we spent two whole lessons on inverse functions, all of them. And then we're gonna spend like 10 lessons, plus a little bit, on this. Secondly, you remember the reason why we're doing this now, for the extension two students is, what's the next topic coming up? It's harder integration, right? And one of the most important harder integrals is these inverse trigonometric functions, okay? So that's where we are. Let's start, would you get your ruler out? Draw me a nice set of axes. Usually when we draw trigonometric functions, we just go from north to two pi. I'd like to do a little more of it today. So let's go from say, I don't know. Let's go negative four pi. To four pi, okay? Yeah, so let's do sine x. From negative four pi to four pi, how many whole copies, how many periods are we going to go through in that time? Four. One, two on the negative side, three, four on the negative on the positive side, okay? So would you draw that for me? It doesn't have to be beautiful, um, but being that you've got four of them, let's try and make it as consistent as possible. Okay. Oh, I totally need more than this. That's okay. <laughs> Just. People with templates right now are totally laughing at the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? As in like the size of that? Yeah. Okay. As you continue drawing, I just want to point out, just in general from what I can see around the room, <laughs> um, you've come a long way. Mostly. Uh, in how you're drawing, in true guys, I don't know if any of your hoard is enough to still have like your beginning of year 11 work on when we're doing this kind of thing. And you've made some great progress. So well done. Still some things to work on. But admittedly, this is quite artificial. You'd almost never have to draw something um, with this kind of, with this frequency and have to draw that much of it. So you usually can get away with um, less consistency than I'm forcing on you. Now, okay, now. If you at least have two copies of the graph on there, or even one, okay, I want you to put your pens down and just look up for a second. Having a look at this function, okay, y equals sine x, this presents an enormous problem for us, right? You don't need to write this. But if you recall, this guy, this function, has no inverse function, right? Has no inverse function. What does it have? It has an inverse relation, right? When you do your swap, you're going to get something which fails the vertical line test. So, what do we do if we want an inverse function out of this? What do we do? Yeah, we restricted the domain, right? So when you have a look at this, that guy, that has an inverse function. Passes the horizontal line test, so it's inverse passes the vertical line test, and we're fine, right? So you have a look at this guy, and you think in exactly the same way, this clearly has no inverse, right? If we were to do our swap of variables, do our reflection across y equals x, which by the way, where is y equals x on this, in relation to sine x? It's gonna be, because we, we established this under calculus of the um, theory of function, right? It's um, coming right through here and it's tangential to sine x, right? So you wondered what the gradient of, like when you're looking now at your graphs, and again, those of you with templates, Totally laughing at the rest of you, right? Even mine is a bit steep. Do you notice that? Like if I were to put that there, I don't think that's really 45 degrees, but it should be. Anyway, I digress. 
I'm clearly going to have to do something similar. I'm going to have to restrict domain. Okay. Now, question. When we restricted the domain of this guy, right, in order to define its inverse, the square root of x, why did we choose this part of the graph? Because we didn't have to. Why did we choose x is greater than 0? Because we wanted to find a length. Say it again. We wanted to find a length. Yeah, we thought about what did we want to use this for. And the answer was, generally, Pythagoras, right? We want to use it for a length. Lengths are positive, so it makes sense. This is like the most common use case. Okay, so that's the basis on which we picked this. Okay, and of course we were paying attention to the stationary point. That's what's significant about the boundary. Okay, so far so good. So when you come over here, it's a little more complicated, isn't it? It's not just that. It's this half or this half. How many stationary points do you see? <laughs> well, you told me there were four cycles, right? And there's there's two stationary points for every cycle. So I've got eight of them here, right? I have to be, well, I have to not just say from here all the way. I have to start somewhere and I have to end somewhere, right? And I can choose. I can legitimately choose, right? So for instance, pick up your pen again. If I were, for instance, to say, okay, here's a stationary point right here. What's that value? Radians, guys. What's that value? Three, three pi on two, right? Because that's two pi. So one, two, that's one and a half of them. So three pi on two. If I were going to the right, how far could I go before I had to stop? To the right, right? Every one of these is pi radians, right? So if I were to go all the way over to here, how far have I traversed? I've gone up to 5 pi on 2, right? Okay, so if I wanted to, I could say y equals sine x from 3 pi on 2 to 5 pi on 2. Ta-da, restricted. It passes the horizontal line test in this domain. Thumbs up. I can make that the definition for the inverse if I wanted to. It's a terrible choice, isn't it? Why is it a terrible choice? Because it doesn't have any nice numbers. <laughs> no nice numbers in there. I guess another way of saying it is, um, what kind of angles are in this um, in this domain? What kind of angles? Three pi on two. Three pi on two. Right. That's um. You go all the way from zero to pi. You go all the way from zero to pi, and then you've gone three pi on two. Right. So you get three quarters of the way around the circle. That's a reflex angle, isn't it? And that's the smallest angle in your domain. And then it just gets worse. And then you get to five pi on two. There's five pi on two in my circle. Really bad. Answer, as an angle that I could measure, it's nowhere on my circle. 2 pi is the biggest I can go, right? So even on that, like this is as far as it's useful. So 3 pi on 2 to 5 pi on 2, not a great choice. What would be a better one? 